Welcome to another Truth Matters podcast episode where we are speaking the unbiased biblical truth. Stay tuned for today's episode. Well, hello, guys. Welcome back to another Truth Matters podcast, episode 93. Thank you so much for tuning in to today's episode. Hope you're having a great day today. Why God? Why do I serve God? Why do I claim this Christianity? Out of all the 4,200 plus religions in the world, out of all the theories and beliefs there are out there, why would I choose Christianity? Why would I choose the belief that I have? Is it because of my geographical location? Is it because of my upbringing? Is it because somebody told me to believe in it, and so I took their word at it and I believed it? Is it because I'm simply convinced in my mind? Is it because someone proved something to me to get me to believe what I'm believing? Is it because I read a book or I watched a YouTube video or I listened to a theologian explain this faith to me. Out of all the reasons you could choose to believe in what you believe in, here's the reason why I believe in what I believe in. Because it's true. Because it's the truth. Because it's infallible. Because it's never changing. Because it not only convinces me in my mind, but in the very depths of my soul. There's nothing that could ever convince me otherwise that this is the truth. When you look at the sun, can anyone convince you otherwise? When you step into the shore of the ocean and you feel the water hit your feet, can anyone convince you that it's lava? Can anyone convince you otherwise when you know for a certainty that what you're doing is standing in the ocean? This God that I serve is not just a belief system. It's not just a school of thought. It's not just because I've been brought up in a certain geographic where I was exposed to the truth. Thank God for that. It's not just because my parents brought me up in the ways of the Lord. Thank God for that. It's not just because I've been born and raised in a Bible-believing church. Thank God for that. I didn't always live this way. There was a time in my life when I did it my own way. I experimented with drugs and alcohol. I lived in the pleasures of this world. I lied, I cheated, I drank, I gambled. I'd done things that were really not profitable for me. I didn't always want to live for God. Deep down in my soul, I did, because there was a missing link. There was a missing element. But in my flesh, I was running. I was trying to do my own thing, trying to find a false peace and joy. But when I truly gave my heart to God, when I heard that preacher preach the gospel, as I heard so many times before, this was different because I felt the tug in my soul. I felt the God of creation calling his creation back to him. Come back home. I felt him pull at my spirit and lead me to conviction and repentance. I knew that I wasn't right in my heart. I knew that if I were to die in that state I was in, I wouldn't make it to heaven, but I would go to a real place called hell. You know, they don't preach hell anymore. If more people understood the seriousness of hell, if more people understood that there is a true heaven and there is a true hell, if more preachers preached the true gospel, and not just a watered-down prosperity gospel, we'd see more people come to the faith. We'd see more people converted. We'd see more people saved. But when I gave my heart to God at 15 years old, I wasn't just looking for something to fix me or to make me feel better about myself, but my soul was crying out for a change. Deep down in the soul of every man is a yearning for the truth. There's a yearning for what we're destined to do. When we look around, we see a lot of dreams and ambitions. and We see a lot of people chasing a fantasy, if you will, chasing some kind of dream, 
chasing something to make them feel like they're living a purpose or they're making an impact on not only their lives, but the lives of others. When the truth is, all of these things in this world are only a cover-up for the real thing. They're only a false hope. The things of this world will only last us for the time that we are here. And maybe some of those things will endure after we're gone and our children after us and grandchildren will carry those legacies on. But at some point, every legacy ends. Those things only go so far, but they do not fulfill the soul of man. They do not give you that true inner peace that you're looking for. No matter how successful you are, no matter how famous you are, no matter how great you think you are, no matter how popular you are, there will still be a void in your soul. If you do not have this God I'm talking about, why God? Why do I serve creator God, the only God, the one true God? He is the creator. I serve him because I know him, not by mind only, not by my natural flesh only, but I know him by the spirit. Romans 8 and 16 says, The Spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. When you give your heart to God, there is a knowing, there is a surety that is unwavering. There is a confidence that you will never find in any other belief system. Let me ask you, what other book have you read that has not just changed your mind, but has changed the very fabric of your soul? and converted you, and made you a different person that has absolutely given you that inner peace that you truly desire. I ask you, what other book has been written thousands of years ago, but still is relevant to this day, to the human heart, to the need, to the situations of humanity, and the desire of the soul? What other God, I ask you, has given himself for the sins of mankind. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. What other God, I ask you, is as selfless as this God? That he would be willing to send his only Son. And the mystery is that he would come down and wrap himself in flesh, and his name would be called Emmanuel. God with us. Jesus Christ suffered, bled, and died on an old rugged cross for you. The God of creation came down to prove his love for you. He lived 33 and a half years on this earth, understanding not just by omniscience, but by experience what it's like to be a human, what it's like to be a man, what it's like to be a baby an infant, a child, an adolescent, a young man. He went to the cross for you and I. He took the stripes for our healing, the healing of the nations, the healing of the world. He suffered and he bled and he died on that old rugged cross. And he took the keys of death, hell, and the grave, and he rose again on the third day so that you and I could live with him for eternity in heaven. The truth is all men are born into sin, and we're on our way to hell if we do not accept this man, Jesus Christ. He made a way out for you. God never wanted us to go to hell but we're already on our way to hell. But he sent a way out for you. Jesus is that way. He is that door. And what other God, I ask you, can raise himself up from the grave? What other God is so powerful that he can raise him his own self up 
from the grave. Why do I believe in this God that I believe in? Because he is the truth. I know by experience. And I promise you, if you give him a chance, you will understand the words that I'm saying to you are truth. It doesn't matter what religion you are right now. It doesn't matter what race. It doesn't matter where you're located. It doesn't matter what you've done. He loves you. He truly loves you. He created you. He wants the best for you. And right now, He wants you to give Him your whole heart. Listen to me. Don't allow the confusion to tell you that it, this is not true. Don't allow the lying spirit to tell you that this is not the truth. Believe in what I'm saying today. Give Jesus a chance. Let him change your life. Just say, Jesus, I believe that you suffered, you bled, and you died on the cross for me. And I believe you took the keys of death, hell, and the grave for me. I believe you conquered it all, and you rose again on the third day so that I could be free from an eternal hell and so that I could live in an eternal heaven with you. So Jesus, will you save me today? Will you come wash away my sins? Will you come cleanse me from all unrighteousness? Will you forgive me? And will you save me? And will you show me the way? Thank you, Jesus, for saving. Thank you. If you prayed that prayer and you meant it with your heart, with your whole heart, you are saved. You are on your way to heaven right now. And I'm challenging you today to begin to evaluate your lifestyle and get rid of those things that are not right in God's eyes. Get a Bible, King James Version Bible, and begin to read that Bible. If you don't have a Bible-based church, go to a Bible-based church. Find you a Bible-based church. Let God lead you. Follow the voice of God. It, it, it's a powerful thing. It, it's foolishness to the world. But to us, it's the power of God. You are his child. And he said that my sheep know my voice and a stranger they will not follow. Pray to him. Talk to him. Ask him to lead you to the right church. Ask him to lead you to, uh, to the truth. Ask him to show you what to do, and he will. Walk with him. Give him your whole heart. Never look back. You'll see that I'm right. One day when you're in heaven, you'll thank me for bringing to you this little podcast. I hope you enjoyed this podcast. Until next week. If you enjoyed this podcast, please share it with your family and friends so that we can get the truth out. Have a great day, 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 day. day.